So let's quickly go over Freyette's principles. So there's three principles that Freyette is typically going to cover. So the first is going to be the first principle, and it deals with type 1 somatic dysfunctions. Type 1 somatic dysfunctions are always going to be neutral, meaning that they're not going to be flexed or extended. Uh, on the other side, type 2s will always be flexed or extended. Uh, let's talk about the type 1 and type 2. They're going to deal with the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine. So we're going to deal with the thoracic and the lumbar spines. That's where these principles apply to. So the first uh, type 1 somatic dysfunctions, I've already said it's going to be neutral. So for our naming situation, we're going to always be neutral. And for naming of type 2, we're going to be flexed or extended. Okay, so let's keep going on. Type 1s deal with always three or more segments. So we're going to be dealing with three vertebrae or more. So you can have three to five to ten vertebrae involved. Uh, on the other hand, type 2 uh, somatic dysfunctions are only going to involve one segment. Well, if you're doing the math, what happened to two segments? What happens if it's two segments? Uh, then it's thought to be two individual type 2 somatic dysfunctions. So two one-segment pieces next to each other. Um, what actually causes each somatic dysfunction? Well, type 1s that involve three or more segments are caused by posture, so bad posture, bad gravitation uh, upon the, the spine. Well, type 2s, on the other hand, are going to be more point traumas. They're going to be due to injuries of some sort. So type 1s are going to be held in place by long restrictor muscles. The long restrictor muscles are going to gap multiple segments. So uh, for example, the erector spinae muscles. The, uh, those will be examples of long restrictor muscles. They'll span more than one or two segments. They'll span multiple segments. Short restrictor muscles, on the other hand, will only be between segments uh, of each other. So let's go back to the naming. Uh, one thing I would also like to point out is type 1s are always named opposite of side bending and rotation. So side bending and rotation opposite. While naming for the type 2s, you're going to have side bending and rotation in the same direction. So same. Okay, so let's, let's do a mock naming example. So I've already said type 1s are always going to be neutral. So we're going to start with N. And then also we've got side bending. So side bending. And then also rotation. So if we're in a neutral, so let's, let's make up segments 3 through 7 of your thoracics are going to be neutral. They would be side bend, let's say left. Well, if it's side bend left, then you know that it's going to have to rotate the opposite direction. So if it's side bend left, it'll be rotated right. If you see neutral, you're always thinking type 1. You're thinking multiple segments. Then you want to say what segments? Well, it's T3 through T7 is what we said. So our naming would be T3 to T7 would be neutral and side bent left, so the opposite would be rotated right. Next we've got a type 2. Let's go through a mock type 2. Let's say it was flexed at T3. So we'd say T3 is flexed. And now we know that side bend and rotation are in the same direction. So let's just say for fun side bend right rotated right same direction then over here so this is dealing with type 1 and type 2 so the first two of Freya's principles now we're going to deal with the third principle kind of like the cousin of type 1 and type 2 so the third principle is strictly going to say movement in one plane of motion will restrict motion in the other two planes so we have three planes we have flexion we have extension these are in the same plane we have side bending That'll be in another plane. And then we've got rotation. And that's going to be in our third plane. So we have one, two, and three planes of motion. And we have a video that goes over the planes of motion. So we're going to have flexion and extension, side bending, and rotation. So if we flex the patient, we're going to have decreased motion in the side bending and decreased motion in the rotational components. So if we side bend a patient, we'd have decreased movements in flexion and decreased rotation, and then likewise for rotation. 
So simply saying, if we make one motion for the patient, if we side bend the patient, then their other two planes will be simply decreased uh, in range of motion. 